Hey guys, I'm Nick Vavis and welcome to City of Churches. Now, here on City of Churches, we take an in-depth look at different churches in the Brooklyn Diocese and we also look at the neighborhoods that surround them. Today, I'm in Bushwick, Brooklyn to visit St. Barbara. It's a 100-year-old church. We'll look at its art, its architecture, and also learn how it got its name. The history of Bushwick goes back to the 17th century when it was founded by the Dutch West India Company. The name itself in Dutch means town in the woods, and it was actually bought from the Canarsie Indians. I'm here on Bushwick Avenue, which is a main street through Bushwick. I'm on the corner of Bushwick and Bleecker Street. Now, a lot of the local names around, like Bleecker Street and Wyckoff, Onderdonk and Sweedam, they date back to the original Dutch settlers who designated these when they were just local lanes and byways. Even the borough named Brooklyn is derived from a Dutch term that roughly translates into broken lane. In the mid-19th century, there was a huge wave of German immigration into America, and a lot of families settled here in Brooklyn. One of their contributions to American culture was lager beer, and Bushwick soon became known as the beer capital of the Northeast, with 45 breweries in operation. They produced many different brands, such as Rheingold, Knickerbocker, Budweiser, and Epics, among others. A lot of the wealthy beer barons built their homes here along Bushwick Avenue. Now, at the time, they were palatial estates, beautiful. Today, they're considered a little more common. Some are broken up into apartment complexes. Now, at the time, the biggest brewery was the Epic Germania Beer Company, and that family was actually responsible for the origination of St. Barbara. In the 1890s, the Epic family donated the land where the church now stands. They wanted a new church to provide for the increasing number of German Catholics in the area. But there was a catch. They insisted that the church be named in honor of St. Barbara, the German patron saint and the martyr. But other people suggest that the name actually came from an epic family relative whose name was Barbara, and she was probably named after St. Barbara. To this day, anybody's guess. In addition to the breweries, Bushwick was at one time a cultural center. The Amphion Theater features operas, stage productions, and later, silent films. There was also a lot of small businesses at the time, and local businesses, taverns and bars and pubs, and then the textile industry started opening factories here. With all the Irish immigrants that came in, a lot of them worked in some of these small businesses in the area. Legendary comedian Jackie Gleason grew up on Chauncey Street here in Bushwick. His catchphrase was how sweet it is, and today the famous phrase has been added to the Welcome to Brooklyn sign at the exit of the Brooklyn Bridge. Now by the 1930s and 40s, what was once an affluent and wealthy neighborhood began to deteriorate a bit, and this became more of a working class neighborhood. And by the 1950s, most of the population here was Irish and Italian, but a lot of those parishioners started to move slowly out of the neighborhood. Following the end of World War II, suburban living became very affordable and desirable. Over the next 10 years, thousands of families moved away from Brooklyn, as did many local businesses. The breweries and other factories eventually closed or moved out. The neighborhood went into serious economic decline, and thousands of New York's poorest families resided here. Bushwick became a national symbol of urban blight and decay, culminating in riots, fires, and looting during the 1977 blackout. Today, however, the neighborhood is being reborn through successful urban renewal programs and gentrification. Hardworking immigrants are making Bushwick their home, as are young professionals. Although many old and abandoned buildings have been demolished, some of the once grand mansions still remain, including the old Cook Mansion. Urban explorers can still view the remains of two of the long-gone Homer Brewery buildings, as well as the former home of John Hyland who was mayor of New York City from 1918 to 1925. Now, I'm passing Freedom Square, which is 
a war memorial. It actually tells you on the inscription. It commemorates the sacrifice of the Brooklyn men who gave their lives during World War One. And something else interesting about this, maybe you can hear the subway over my head, the development of the subway actually led to the development of the area because it connected Brooklyn with Manhattan. And so a lot of diversity now in the neighborhood, which is a great thing. One of the things that hasn't changed over the years is the presence of St. Barbara in the neighborhood, right here at the corner of Bleecker and Central Avenue. And if you can look at the cornerstone and see 1909, it's over 100 years old. A couple things to notice when you first approach the facade of the building. There's a lot of details that are different from the actual design when the church was originally constructed. If you take a look, there's a few um, openings, like the one directly above the center of the door. It looks like something should be there, and it was supposed to be statues, and we're not really sure why that never happened. Maybe something's planned for the future. And then there's also the horizontal and vertical squares on either side of the door. We're not sure what was supposed to be there, but they're sort of hollowed out as if there should have been something there. Two more places in the bell tower, there's some circle areas up there were supposed to be clocks. So aside from some of the things that may seem to be missing from the front of the church, there's really still a lot of designs and intricacies that, that really make it a beautiful church. Now this is one of the tallest structures in Brooklyn and the bell towers that go soaring up into the sky. It uh, can be seen for miles around and it's really quite beautiful. So I want to head on inside. Father Gutierrez is ready for us. He's taking us on a tour and we're going to ask him some of the questions that I just mentioned. Maybe he'll give us some of the details and some of the history and we'll find out exactly what the church is all about. So let's go in. Father Gutierrez, how are you? I'm doing great. Good to see you. Likewise, and welcome to St. Barbara's, Nick. I appreciate it. I appreciate the tour you're about to take me on. I got a lot of questions. Great. I'll be happy to answer those questions. There's a test later, so we got to get them all right. Great. Right? Well, let's see how we're going <laughs> to do, do the best you exactly. can. <laughs> well, the first thing I would ask you is I, I came in from the L train, which was pretty nearby, and then I could see um, from down the street the two towers and this, you know, sort of magnificent church. W what's the style? Church. Well, this is indeed a beautiful church and one of the most beautiful churches in Brooklyn and Queens. Uh, the style is a Baroque style. Uh, I believe that it's a replica of a church in a place in Germany. So is that the population now? Is it like predominantly a German population? Well, no, right now the population would be Spanish and uh, I would say 80%. Oh, okay. Yeah, because walking here I saw there was a lot of Hispanic uh, population. Yes, originally this is the third church that was built in here, in this area. Um, the first church uh, was a wooden church, which according to my knowledge was built in seven days. And then it burned wow. down. And then another church, uh, which used to be the convent, was built. And then that church was outgrew and they decided to build this church now, the one that we are uh, walking in now. I came here three years ago and when I walked into the church I was completely amazed. Amazed, right. To see the architect, to see the style and the details that the church has. Mm. I, I have to confess that when I walked in, I just went back when originally the church was originally open. The beauty of it and how beautiful it is now, imagine then when it was completely uh, uh, finished. So at that time the church was 100 years old? Yes, so they began to build this church in 1909. Nine, and imagine okay. this is 100 years ago. Okay. If this was a uh, desolate land and imagine if you, you would be able to see the church from miles away. The towers, as you said, when you walked into the church, you would be able to see it was the center, the center of the community. Because in those days... Because it was like country. It was, it was a country country. Yes. There was a lot of land. Yes. Yeah, a yeah. lot of land here in, in, in Bushwick. According to my knowledge, um, there was a lot of breweries here in, breweries? in Bushwick. Yeah. And uh, the story goes that one of the owners of the breweries um, bought the land and donated it to build the church. Before um, uh, the church was built, the German uh, people used to worship at St. Martin or Tours and the other neighboring uh, parishes. So is the church in good shape, by the way? I mean, the it, really, it looks in, like it is. It looks, you know. The church is indeed in good shape, it is indeed. And, and we try to keep it. Uh, the church was renovated uh, 15 years ago by, oh, it was. by okay. Monsignor uh, John Powers. Uh, and of course, I mean, uh, the people came together 
and they collected the money in, in order to renovate this beautiful church as we um, see it now. And then as far as the, um, the stained glass, Father, do you have uh, a favorite, I would ask, or do you have? On my left, we have the Good Shepherd. As a pastor, we are called to be the Good Shepherd to God's people, to nourish, to heal, and to take care of them. And of course, on my right, we have um, stained glasses of Jesus' Last Supper. As a priest, we are called to, to celebrate the Eucharist, but also at the same time to offer ourselves to die too on the altar as Jesus died on the cross for the salvation of the whole world. And those two uh, um, stained glasses are my favorite one here at St. Barbara's. Attached to this church, we have a rectory which is located in 138 Bleecker Street. Okay. The church faces um, Central Avenue. There's a school as well as a yes, rectory Yes, the, the school, the, we had a school that was closed in 1973. Uh, but recently, uh, a very generous man came to the Diocese of Brooklyn and spoke to Richard de Martian and, and told him that he would like to open a free Catholic school in a poor neighborhood. And we, were, we have been blessed. They came to our neighborhood. They came to Bushwick. They came to St. Barbara's. And so right now we have a, a Catholic school which began again in September last year. One of the good things about this school is that it's free. This benefactor is paying everything completely. And the children come from, from 8.30 to 5.30. The whole day is an academic. And I really, really have been touched by how this, the life of this children has been really transformed in just a few months. What's the, because um, you know, we talked about how the population is primarily Hispanic. What language do they teach in? I mean, is well, it a mix of English and no, Spanish? No, 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 it is not, it's just uh, uh, English. It's just English? Right now we don't have any bilingual program since do not. we okay. just began uh, a year ago. Is there a Spanish uh, mass or? Well, we Either have, on bilingual. weekends, we have four Masses, uh, Saturday, 7.30 in Spanish, uh, 9.30 on Sunday in English, and 11 o'clock on Sunday uh, in Spanish, and 12.30 bilingual. Okay. And during that Mass, we see a lot of children coming in a young, in a young, really? young crowd. I forgot to ask about the choir loft, because this is something, we obviously there's one in pretty much every church we've seen. But I mean, this is gigantic. It takes, it goes from wall to wall, in the in the church itself. What can yes, you tell me about? Yes, it is indeed the in one of the largest uh, organs in the Diocese of Brooklyn, mm. and it was renovated when the church was renovated 15 years ago. We use it uh, for weddings and for special celebrations. Uh, it needs some repairs, but it's working fine. So you do still use it, though. Yes, we do. We do still use it. And then in front of that, there's, I'm assuming there are all the angels. Oh yes, if you notice, um, there's a lot of angels there with uh, harps, with um, trumpets. The purpose of it is that we come together to sing. We unite our voices with the angels in heaven to sing to our Heavenly Father so in heaven. So it's a musical theme. Obviously. It is indeed a musical theme. And I'll bet that sounds amazing, right? Throughout yes. the church. Oh, it's, it's working. wonderful. It's, it's incredible. Beautiful. Oh, and then I have to point out the, um, the pulpit. I mean, that's, that's simply amazing. It is one of the most beautiful pulpits in the Diocese of Brooklyn. And we will uh, talk about later on, um, but okay. it's unique. <laughs> and we still, we use it every Sunday. Yeah. So every Sunday we use it. But if you notice the statues around uh, the church, uh, we have about 15 statues here, and they are so unique. There's a lot of them, like normally you don't see that many. Yes, indeed, statues. you are right. You don't see this in many churches in Brooklyn and Queens, but we do have it here in, 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 in St. Barbara's. And also, if you notice, the uh, Stations of the Cross, they're also unique, uh, and we saw many details, and I don't believe that nowadays we won't be able to... Uh, to replicate? Exactly, because it will cost so much money. Let us now walk into the baptism fund. Okay. The baptism fund is unique because it was, uh, re uh, the church was renovated 15 years ago, and this baptism fund was uh, built here 15 years ago. One of the things is that if you look around the baptism fund, we use it, the two funds, and actually it's only one fund, but this fund here 
we use it for regular baptism. Sure. Okay. The other one, which we use uh, for immersion, we use it uh, during the Easter Vigil um, for uh, the uh, young adults and adults who receive the sacraments. Now, what they did when they renovated the church, they took the altar rails and used part of the altar rails to uh, put it around uh, the uh, oh, you're full kidding. version. Oh, yes, that was kidding. That was the original altar rail, which is no, so there is no altar rail, basically. Well, no, they, we, they removed apart. it only, they, uh, they removed it from when they renovated the church. Okay. And so they used it to uh, build this one and also to build the altar, which I would like you to uh, show it to you. Oh, yeah, can we head up to the altar? Yes, why don't we Honestly, walk up to the altar? It's the center of everything we need to see. Yes, indeed. Wow. As you notice, Beautiful. It is indeed beautiful. Uh, the altar was not here before the renovation of the church 15 years ago. The altar was created during the renovation. And what they did, they took pews away from the congregation so that they would bring the altar closer to God's people. So, so the whole platform that we're standing on was not here. This was pews. You are right. The whole platform was not here before the renovation. Okay. Now, if you notice the altar, what they did at the base of the altar, what they did, they took the altar rails as they, as they did for the baptism Yeah, front. they look very familiar, I was going to say. Oh, they yes. really pieced up that altar rail, right? Yes, indeed. Some and they stairs, are some so beautiful. Amazing. If you look at it, the details that the base of the altar has is fantastic. Mm. Because in those days, God's people wanted to give the best to God. They wanted to offer Him the best that they had at that time. It's and so, so detailed. It's, what is it? Is it a tree? What is it? I can't well, it has a lot of trees. Um, figure is. You know, the leaves. The leaves. Yes. The trunk yes. of the tree. Okay. If you look around, you can see where the original oh, altar sure. rails. On each end. Yes. Uh, you see on my left, you will see uh, they left that piece over there to let people know where the altar rails was before. Okay. Now. Come follow me and I will show you where the, um, you're going to see the marks where the altar rails were before. You can see it right there. They removed there. it. Yes, yes. In those days before Vatican Council, people, the altar rails were here and people would come and, and kneel down to uh, receive the body of Christ. I love the mosaic. On the oh, floor it's too. gorgeous it, indeed. I was looking up too, it's above the tabernacle. Yes, let us go, come closer to the, uh, the sanctuary. It is a, a beautiful sanctuary. Now, if you notice, down here you see uh, the Last Supper of Jesus with the Apostle. And all these things are original. This is the original. The original, yes, yes. And then on top, of course, you see this. It's in this. pretty good shape. Yes, original. indeed. The yeah. tabernacle. You see the tabernacle? It's amazing. If you notice here, it's, it's in the center of the church. Um, and if you look on top, you will see the Lamb of God the Lamb Jesus that sacrificed himself for our sins. And on top of the Lamb, you see the coronation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. One of the unique things that they kept when they renovated the church was the inscription, which is taken from uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 3. Okay. And he says that in this tabernacle is where God and his people dwell. It's beautiful because the, indeed, we believe that God is here in the tabernacle with Jesus and where we come together to meet God and God comes to meet us. And then is the dome, it's sort of like a half dome above the whole thing. Yes. Is it, that unusual? Is that something I kind of unusual see? and I have no it looks great. records. I mean, it's... Why? Because you notice know, like a half dome and then you see the other the full dome here. Um, but it is a, a magnificent, it is a beautiful, it is beautiful Was indeed. this repainted, you know, like during the renovation? Do they repaint the interior? Do you know? Well, they... The they, gold is really like right, gold, they, the paint. They repainted, but they kept the original of color of, of the church, yes. And the stained glass again, these are actually larger than some of the lower ones. Another famous one for me is um, Jesus on the cross with uh, yeah. his mother and uh, John the Baptist. As a matter of fact, I used that quote from the Bible uh, when I was ordained a priest mm -hmm. and, and, and give it out uh, with imprinting in the holy cart. And as far as you know, these are the originals as well? Almost. Yes, indeed, yeah. 100 years old. Remember that in those days, the people wanted to give the best to God and yeah. they built to last. And especially German people. Mm -hmm. 
They build things to last. It really is, it's a great view up here. I mean, this is a great place to deliver a sermon. It is indeed, and it's, <laughs> it's it's, good, it is it's, indeed. And also, it's amazing. especially if you go and proclaim the word of God from the pulpit. Of course, this is what you were um, holding out on me. Can we go? Sure, why don't we just <laughs> take a look at the pulpit? the pulpit? Okay. <laughs> Here we this are, is amazing. Nick, as you can see the beautiful view uh, of the church, how beautiful the church looks from here. It's a lot of space up here too. You're it not is, used to sharing the space, are you? Not really, usually the <laughs> priest- stay here for a while. The priest there. comes up to proclaim <laughs> the word by himself and the lectures as well. And so every Sunday, we proclaim the word of God from here, from the pulpit. And if you have noticed, uh, this is original from the beginning of the church, when the church was built. And if you notice around, it has so many details. Mm. Around the pulpit, you will uh, notice three different paintings depicting different uh, things as uh, the Word of God came to this continent. Mm. On my right, you have a, a painting of a priest uh, working with uh, the African-American people. Mm. In the center, you will, you will see a painting of the Franciscan coming to the new continent, working with the uh, native people in here in the United States. And on my left, you will see a painting of Jesus ascending to heaven as he sent the disciple to proclaim, to bring the word of God to all the nations. And all of this is, um, this is original? You it said? is original. Oh, thing. Yes. And it's something of a tree house. I mean, obviously there's a tree, there's the grapes, there's the leaves all symbolic of... It is. If you, as you mentioned, it is a treehouse from the beginning. And also you mm. see the grapes, which we use the grapes to uh, convert into wine, and the they wine. use the wine yep. on the altar. And also, if you look around, you will see a lot of details. He has a peacock, and also on top of the um, uh, pulpit, you will notice an angel mm -hmm. with a trumpet, trumpet calling God's people to listen to God's words. And if you notice on my right, you will see a shrine of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and also you can see an image of the Divine Mercy. Mm. And on my left, as you mentioned, uh, we can see a shrine of the Blessed Virgin Mary, she who really is our Heavenly Mother, who intercedes always for us. This, this has to be a great view when you're delivering your sermon over the congregation. I mean, this is really incredible. Oh, it is, it is. And it's the people, the when, I mean, you can see, you can see from here who's paying attention, who is not. Because yeah, and there's that too, yeah. So they have, to, they have to pay attention <laughs> and uh, because you can see everybody from here from uh, the pulpit. Perfect. Well, listen, with that, Father Gutierrez, I'm going to say thank you for this tour. It was really, really incredible. This is certainly one of a kind, well, I have um, to say. Thank you for coming, and it was really a pleasure to have you here at St. Barbara's. Thanks. I'll see you back. And with that, we uh, conclude this episode of City of Churches here at St. Barbara's in Bushwick. And if you'd like information on this church or any other church in our series, you can log on to netny.net. Or if you'd like to suggest a church we should profile, you can log on there as well. Until next time, I'm Nick Vavis with City of Churches.